What up, people? Crack Lemonade here, and I'm playing Zombies Ate My Neighbors for the Sega Genesis. It's a game that I grew up playing, and it is one of, you know, uh, the go-to games that, you know, um, I would relatively go back to regularly regularly when I was younger and I wanted to play this game um and the idea of like what I'm talking about kind of was what I wanted to talk about with Rocket Knight Adventure but then I talked about something else with that and I kind of feel like um, you know, when I was playing video games in, um, the 90s or, you know, early 2000s, even, uh, with the PlayStation and PlayStation 2, I really did not have, like, I guess a consideration for companies or buying games uh when they came out like just price wise i would gravitate towards used games i would go to funko land um as opposed to like going to somewhere like kb toys where you're like, buying the game new um and you know you don't really know you like you don't know what you don't know and you don't know that, hey, you know, this game company is going under or this studio is getting closed and you'll never see this game again. And you, it's not something that I feel like was a common thought process either when it came to like buying video games or supporting video games in um, any way, shape, or form, right? And I think a lot of that has changed um, with the internet and, like, you know, social media and being able to get news about video game companies quicker you you have a little bit more insight into like hey you know this game this game didn't sell well so this studio is closing and i feel like even now from like a fan perspective we don't really have a lot of like the the insight on like the monetary side of the business we have some and there are some legitimate gripes with modern video gaming that are had, like, you know, um, day one patches, uh, DLC, uh, you know, fractioning content to, uh, maximize, like, the amount of money. Um, there, there are so many different topics that you could probably, uh, talk about when it comes to like gaming game development and in you know, uh issues of that sort and ultimately i don't know i don't know enough about any of the the words that i said to make a coherent enough argument about anything that I just said. So, you know, it's just something that I think about now because I do have these games that um, I played when I was younger and part of it is I remember this point where I first got a PlayStation and I still had... Um, my sega genesis library 
but I didn't have any um, PlayStation games like that. Um, so, you know, I, I was eyeing PlayStation games, but I didn't have an income. So what I did was, you know, go, go to Funko Land. You don't realize when you are actually a child uh, what you are doing. Um, and, you know, I traded in, like, my Sega Genesis Model 1 and all of the games that, you know, I now have again and get to play for uh, the YouTubes now. Um, you know, I, I got rid of all those games. And it's something that I'm kind of, you know, like... A little envious of like people who you know have like all of their childhood games and like didn't get rid of them because um of one reason or another like you, you had the foresight to to keep those games and you know not not a lot of us were uh of that of that mindset so you know you are indeed of a rare uh, breed if you are one of those people who, you know, has a lot of the games that, or even a good portion of the games that you had as a child. Like, that is, that's, that's real dope. Shout out to you. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that, um, you know, now that I'm older and I get to read, like, these articles about game companies going out of business and, and actually, like, thinking about it now of how many games I was like, oh, yeah, you know, they'll probably have a sequel for that on the PlayStation or, like, on the PlayStation 2. And just to, like, actually see in real life that not only, not only did that not happen, that was just kind of silly to think um, that uh, certain games would be made in perpetuity or certain games would garner a sequel because... You know, I found it at a certain point in time and I enjoyed it. Um, you know, sales are a thing. There is a business to making video games. And sometimes games that we like uh, stop being made. And that is a harsh reality. It's, you know, because, you know... We might have bought it, our friends might have bought it, and people we know might have bought it, but, you know, it it made under the return that they were expecting, so they're like, okay, alright, we can't support this game anymore, right? That is just one of the um, things about video games as a, as a business. So, you know, can't can't say too much else because genuinely that would be kind of um, psycho babble, and I would not know exactly what I am talking about to to give accurate enough information or insights about like failed games. It's just one of those things where yeah, you just don't know. You don't know that um, they'll, they'll never make another Zombies Ate My Neighbors or, you know, it won't get ported to future consoles. It's just on the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo forever. But, like, it was, you know, it was made by Konami. So, like, what what even is the issue? Like, you think about it, hey, like, a PlayStation 2 
version of this game would be hype a, a modern version of it on the playstation 5 would probably be hype it would probably play pretty it would play nice but again it it is it is out of our hands and it is in it is in consideration of people who you know maybe don't know about the ip don't know what to do with the ip and and think it's a bad idea to um use it it's it's a reality that's something that could happen and ultimately one of the things that does happen is you know we we get the games that we enjoy um we might sell the games that we enjoy to get other games that we enjoy but you don't know which game you get rid of or decide to keep that might become like this um classic one day and i felt like the thing about for me and what i see in terms of like video game prices um i i feel like a good portion of what gives um rare video games at high price is a little bit of mystique like a little bit of like oh this wasn't made enough this wasn't given a large print run or this game looks really good somebody makes a video and you and and they just hype the shit out of it and you are like oh my god i need to buy this game and you you seek it out and realize like it's a limited run so maybe you got some extra money yeah like maybe you got some extra money and at that point you decide hey let me um sell some of these copies and you have the right to do that but you know that can also genuinely change the entire market for a game and make it harder for somebody who didn't know about it initially to get the game down the line. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a good thing. People go do what people go do. You know, people got different situations financially so i can definitely understand like if you have you know that little money but you are doing a little bad that that idea pops up in your head but then like you know the long-term effects of that is that some people won't ever get to experience that game because of you know a price inflation that you might have not started but assisted with again not not trying to shame anybody for doing that you do what you do everybody um everybody is entitled <laughs> to figure out ways to to make money and survive and you know some people have have are smart and, and fast enough to um do things like that but um also not glorifying it so i, I should stop lingering on the topic and say it's been cracked lemonade this has been zombies ate my neighbors and you know what i'm done ranting about things there will be another rant in the future about something or something else or maybe nothing i i could probably do a rant about nothing that you know would just leave you at the end of the video like oh, he just wanted to rant maybe that could happen in the future but until next time 
Peace out.